Reggae just extra with Ross Dennis. Scenes depicted in movies such as those in Yardie, Third World Cup, Dance Hall Queen, and Shadas are often based on real-life stories. These scenes are not far from the criminal activities of popular Jamaican reggae DJ Winston Brown, who's better known by his stage name, Ranking Dread. He had a minor UK hit in the early 1980s with Fatty Boom Boom. <laughs> But in the mid-1980s, he faded from the music scene and became more notorious for his criminal activities where he was labeled the most dangerous man in Britain and the number one Yardie Godfather. This is the untold story of Winston Brown aka Ranking Dread with Ras Dennis. Ranking Dread was born in 1955, although he was also known by up to 20 aliases, including Robert Blackwood, Michael Dix, Errol Codling, and Boy Ark. He first entered Britain in 1978, where he soon became a fixture at the Four Aces Club in Dalston, East London. Lloyd Coxone, operator of the Sir Coxone sound system, was the club owner and gave Ranking Dread a spot as a DJ. They just release what they feel will sell. His first experiences as a DJ earning recognition were with the Ray Symbolic Sound System in Jamaica in the 1970s before moving to London. He released his first album, Girls Fiesta, in 1978 and in 1980 released a popular single, Fatty Boom Boom. However, his recording career was over soon after. By 1987, Scotland Yard and the National Drugs Intelligence Unit, NDIU, had gathered intelligence files on Yardie mobsters in Britain who they believed were out to control West Indian crime. Among their hit list was Ranking Dread, who they believed to be involved in drugs, prostitution, and gangland murders. It is thought that Ranking Dread left Jamaica as a fugitive, wanted for questioning in connection with over 30 murders and the shootings of four police officers. In Jamaica, he'd reportedly been an enforcer under JLP, Jamaican Labor Party, Don Claude Mossop, who led a posse in the garrisons around Rima, Tivoli Gardens, and Denham Town in Kingston, Jamaica. Massop's JLP aligned group would later become known as the Shower Posse and Ranking Dreads aka Boy Arc was linked to the killings of at least 29 drug dealing rivals aligned with PNP. After jumping bail for one of the police officer shootings, he fled to London under the name of Errol Codling in 1978, a year later, after the authorities failed to extradite him from Britain. He set up a base in Darenth Road, Stamford Hill. Ranking Dread became a recognized name and face across Black London, including Stoke Newington, Clapton, Brixton, and Peckham. He also moved throughout Britain and abroad, having set up networks in Nottingham and New York. In fact, Ranking Dread was deported from the United States in 1983 after receiving a conviction for possession of cannabis. From his base in Stamford Hill and Stoke Newington in North London, Ranking Dread established a drinking club, a prostitution network, and through armed robbery funded a series of shipments of cannabis to both Britain and the United States. The drinking club in Clapton Way was raided at dawn this morning by police armed with search warrants. In 1986, Ranking Dread became Scotland Yard's number one suspect in the murder of Nigerian drug dealer, Innocent Egg Bilfew, who was thrown out of the window of a high-rise flat in Islington, eight floors at a height of 90 feet. It's thought that Egg Bilfew double-crossed Ranking Dread and his associates by selling them a consignment of marijuana concocted of herbs and tea leaves. Returning shortly after examining their fake product, the men forced their way back into the flat, during which time Egbilfew ended up plunging to his death. The events had happened so quickly that Egbilfew was still holding the remote control unit for his television set. In May 1988, investigative television series, The Cook Report, labeled Ranking Dread as the head of shower posse operations in the United Kingdom in their expose of the Yardies. Program presenter Roger Cook singled out Ranking Dread as a Jamaican mafia-like master villain. Cook intercepted him walking down a busy London street, but when these accusations were put to the man himself, he coolly denied them without even breaking his stride. Slander, 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 slander. 
Ranking Dread Street reputation also did not go unchallenged, and at least one attempt at taking over his business interests was documented whereby a British-born teen attacked him with a machete in a London shebeen. He had several very close scrapes, some people putting his escapes down to his belief in obia, a folk magic and religious practice in the West Indies derived from what is known in West Africa as juju or say black magic. Some gang members believe that occult rituals can protect them in gang fights by cursing their rivals and even protect themselves from bullets. It seems though that one thing they cannot protect against is law enforcement. This is Reggae Just Extra, your number one entertainment channel. On April 14, 1988, police officers raided a Shabeen at Clapton Way, East London. The derelict property owned by Hackney Council had become a focal point for serious and organized crime, particularly the trafficking of cocaine. Following several weeks' surveillance, a team of 32 officers stormed the address and arrested 20 suspects, including Ranking Dread. As well as the arrest police recovered several weapons, including a machete. Small quantities of cannabis and cocaine were discovered, however, there were no firearms or crack. Scotland Yard will not confirm reports that they've netted several big fish in the criminal world, nor are they prepared to say if the raid was primarily aimed at the Yardies, a federation of Jamaican gangs believed to have set up shop in Britain. Under the name of Errol Codling, Ranking Dread was allowed bail by magistrates at Highbury, North London, having been accused of possessing cocaine and cannabis with intent to supply. Three accomplices from Stoke Newington, Penge and Ballam were bailed on similar charges. A few months after the raid in East London, a close friend of Ranking Dread, Rohan Yardy Ron Barrington Barnett, was killed in an early morning shootout in Harlesden, northwest London. A case similar to that of Henry Jenjo Laws, who was shot dead in a drive by shooting on June 14, 1999, at the same area, Harlesden, northwest London. The case remains unsolved. At the scene of Rohan Yardy Ron Barrington Barnett's killing, detectives recovered spent shells from three high-caliber firearms, including a 9mm. The scene displayed all the hallmarks of a Yardy incident. The highly public exhibition of violence failed to turn up any witnesses, and police attributed the killing to a drugs feud. But nearly all the victims of Yardy's violence are other black people. This footage of Dance Party recall when a man was shot dead. Twenty-seven year old Mark Bernald was shot dead. The murder took place off camera, but there's clearly a huge number of witnesses, yet when police arrived, nobody said anything. Three hundred people said they were in the toilet at the time. On November 8, 1988, a decision was made not to try ranking dread in Britain for drugs charges. Instead, home office officials decided to deport him and he was flown to Jamaica with two detectives from Scotland Yard. Shortly after being deported from Britain, Ranking Dread fled to Toronto in July 1989 where he went on to serve a 12-month sentence for assaulting a police officer. In 1990, after being deported from the United States, he was arrested again in Canada for allegedly slashing his girlfriend's face with a knife after entering the country illegally on a fake passport and attempted to gain refugee status there, claiming that he feared for his life in Jamaica due to his political affiliations. He was again deported back to Jamaica in November 1992 where he passed away in a Jamaican prison four years later. Thanks for watching and do remember to subscribe, give it a like and post a positive comment in the comment section below and I'll see you again very soon for another crucial video. Many thanks for watching Reggae Gist Extra with Ras Dennis. Thank <laughs> you.